Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today i got a little project we're going to be working on, making a, an adapter to be able to use some, uh, some tooling, basically a custom arbor for a job that I've got coming up that uh, I'm really kind of behind the eight ball on, or really behind time on, I guess, and just need to get moving forward on. And that is related to the steam stoker engine, engine project. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking, hey, whatever happened to the steam stoker engine? And the truth of the matter is, is that yes, the project has kind of stalled. I had sent out a couple of parts to have some other people work on some things. And for various reasons, it has gone very slowly. And, and, and really what I've been waiting on is the main uh, case. I've been needing to machine some surfaces in there where the crosshead goes. And I sent it down to my friend Adam Booth, uh, A-Bomb 79 down in Florida, for him to do on his metal shaper. And uh, we really thought that was going to be the right way to go with this project. But unfortunately, um, it just is not going to be possible for Adam to set that up. He tried. He gave it his best shot. And uh, I agree with him that we need to go a different route. So we've kind of come up with a plan B, uh, which is going to be to mill those areas in there. But to do that job, I need a custom built arbor to hold a milling cutter to get down in there and do it. I've got a game plan. And uh, but before I can go get that done, we've got to get this arbor made. So that's going to be the project today. And a uh, little spoiler alert, the game plan is, is that I'm going to go down to Florida to my friend John Terry's shop. He has a really large uh, Cincinnati horizontal uh, milling machine that has a vertical head on it that's very heavy duty. This, we can easily mount that whole stoker uh, engine up on this machine. It's big enough to hold it and it's going to be like a vertical milling machine basically is what we're going to be doing and going in there and, and milling it out. And based on the uh, machine marks that were in the original, it looks like that this is how it was originally done, was on a big milling machine. I just didn't have a machine big enough in my shop to do this job. And uh, like I said, we were going to try to do it on the shaper, uh, which I think was a really good plan, but there just wasn't enough clearance in there to, for everything to move around like it needed to. So anyway, let me zoom you in here, show you what we got to build, and let's get it done. So this is the milling cutter that I'm going to use. This is a uh, index face mill. It's a two inch in diameter across. It has a uh, carbide insert cutters that go on here. I I've still got to get a few more to finish this up. I don't have them all in there right now, but you can kind of see how the cutters go in there. And it's, it's considered a face mill uh, because of the way that it's mounted. You've got a basically an arbor that goes down into a socket. There's a, a keyed piece that goes across the top and then that drives it. Now, normally a face mill holder looks something like this. This is, a, this is one that actually fits this cutter for a 40 taper machine. Uh, I just happen to have this one laying around the shop and you can see you got uh, the shoulder here that fits down inside that socket and then you've got a couple of keys to drive it. So this all kind of flops down together like such and you use a uh, socket cap screw in the bottom to tighten that up and just pull it up tight against there and you've got a nice little arbor. Now the problem we've got is we've got to reach down into a hole basically to do this. So I need about a 10 inch shaft coming up off of this. They make uh, a straight shank uh, shaft that fits on these, but they're, the shaft is not long enough for the application that I need it for. So that's the reason I'm having to custom build something here. At least I haven't been able to find one. All right, we are over on the lathe and we're going to start by facing this side off here. Just got it in three jaw chuck. Um, right now, again, I just want to clean this face up. Now what I'm going to do is flip it around to the other side and we're going to clean that side up too. And at the same time here, I'm going to turn this down and make it a little bit thinner. This is just a piece of scrap metal that I pulled out of the scrap bin. I don't even know what kind of steel it is. And it really doesn't matter for the application. The outside is a little bit rough. I'm not, I'm just trying to get it where it's going to turn more or less parallel. 
keep in mind that we'll, we will actually square this thing up once we get it on the shaft. So we will clean up this bottom face again and make sure it's running square to the shaft. So even if there's a little run out here, no big deal. Uh, we'll be taking care of that later on. And we'll face that. All right, now, next thing I need to do is, I know this needs to be thinner than what it is. I need to go do some measurements real quick and figure out how thick this piece needs to be. I'm guessing probably about three quarters of an inch, but I'll need to verify that. And then we will turn this down uh, to get it to the proper thickness. Be right back. I adjusted this in the jaws of the chuck uh, where it sticks out. And yes, three quarters of an inch thick is what I'm shooting for. I put just some magic marker marks on there. Uh, and when I get down closer, we'll start measuring it with the calipers. Uh, but we got a lot of material to take off of this, so uh, I'm just gonna work it down. Uh, we'll bring you back when we get down a little bit closer to the bottom. We'll just take this off one little bite at a time and uh, until we get it down thick to the right thickness. I right, see where we're at. We're shooting for 750. And we're about 769. We got 19 thousandths to come off. I'm gonna put this in my DRO. 0.769, enter. And I should be able to just dial that into 750. We'll do it in a couple of passes. That's about 10 thou right there. And I'm just gonna go for 750. Lock our carriage. Right, I'm gonna pull it back out nice and slow. It's probably gonna make a little bit of a spring cut coming out. right there maybe just a tad under but that's not a critical measurement all right guys uh, next will be to drill and bore a hole through there that we will press up on that shaft let me get set up for that all right, let's start this uh, drilling process I'm gonna start with uh, let's get this up a little bit more I'll start with just a uh, center drill here and I'm just going to get a little dimple in the middle. That just gives me a nice center to drill on. We'll start with a 3 8 inch hole through here. Next we'll go with a 3 quarter inch hole. Slow down my speed a little bit. We were drilling a little bit fast on that three quarter inch. We're going up to a one inch now. Got a boring bar here. And we'll just uh, go ahead and start boring it out here. All right, we're going to get an internal bore micrometer here. And it looks like we're at, let's see, 7582. So we're at one inch, 82 thousandths. I'm going to put that in my digital readout. 1.082. We're going to 125. I'm going to dial in 1.1. Uh, All right, we're at 120. 
which is right what I'm reading on my digital readout. I need five more thou. We're at 123. I'm going slow here. That's exactly what I'm reading on my digital readout. So I'm just going to put in the 125 and we'll, we should be right close to it. All right, let's see where we're at here. So we should be right on 125, which, yeah, maybe just a, I don't know, that's right on the money right there. We're pretty darn close anyway, so. So up next here, what my plan is, is to mill the slot in here that will have the key that will drive that uh, face mill. So 3 8 inch uh, keyway that we need to just cut through here straight across right in the middle of this uh, piece. So what I've got in here now is a edge finder. We're gonna go in here and find the, we'll find this edge, we'll zero the DRO, we'll come over find this edge and then divide that in half and that should put us right in the center of that circle. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Come over when that bottom piece kind of jumps to the side there, we'll be right adjacent, right on the edge. That's ground exactly one half inch in diameter. So I'm gonna zero my digital readout. I'm gonna go back and just double check it. And that's good. Now we're gonna come to the other side. Do the same thing here. There's our edge. And now we can go to the digital readout and center it up. So measurement there was 1.695. We're just gonna select this uh, axis here. And, uh, oops, i tell you what, let me, actually we hit the half function and then select the axis. That divides that number in half, 0.8476. And when I just dial that to zero, we are right in the center. I can lock my table down and we'll be ready to go. So I gotta get a good end mill here. I've got the set of carbide end mills that are made by Rushmore. These are American made in mills, I bought this set a while back and we're gonna get the 3 8 inch one. This is a nice fresh in mill, solid carbide, good USA made tool. We're gonna to use this to cut this with. All right, we should be centered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my mill up. What I'm gonna do is just raise the table up until that just barely touches that metal. Raising it up very, very, very slowly right there. And I'm gonna call that zero. I actually want this to be a little bit under uh, 3 8 inch square, so half of 3 8 is gonna be 3 16, so it's 1 8 7 5. I'm gonna go about a, I'll just go 190 thousandths deep. That'll be a couple of thousandths deeper. Because uh, I'm gonna reface this side once I put it over on that arbor and I want those uh, keys to be not quite touching bottom, have a little bit of clearance on the bottom. So we'll go 190 thousandths deep. Uh, I'm gonna zero my Z axis on the digital readout. And I'm gonna start by just doing 100 thou and we'll just cut across that. a little vibration. I'm going to take that back to 50 thou. I'll take it to 100 thou deep, which will be 50 more. And it 
did seem to cut a lot better in that direction, so I think I'm just gonna make all my cuts in one direction. I'm gonna go to 150 thousandths deep, so another 50 thou. And my final depth, I wanna be 190 thousandths, so uh, we'll just do another 40 thousandths deep. We got our keyway cut there. Cut a couple of keys that we're gonna put inside that block to drive that. And uh, because these are so short and I, I don't want them to sling out, we're gonna put a little um, socket cap screw and actually screw them in place. So what I need to do is drill these and countersink them. I will turn the outside diameter of these to actually match the outside diameter of the uh, part that we're going to turn so I just cut these off on the bandsaw and we should have plenty of meat in there to, to do what we want to do so I got a drill bit in here this should be the size for that uh, screw to go down through and we just centered it up on the key and drill a hole the way through there, and we'll countersink it for the, uh, the cap head screw. There we go. Take this drill bit out, put our countersink in. The countersink nose has a pilot, and then it will uh, drill out a square shaped hole for that cap to drop down through. Should be plenty deep enough. Drop that down in there and test it, yep. So I'll do the same thing for the uh, other one over here. So now I need to drill and tap the holes uh, for these to go down into, again, we're going 832. So I've got the original drill bit that we used in here and I'm just kind of getting it lined up where it's kind of in the center of that piece that we're going. I'm gonna take that out now and swap my drill bits. This is the, I think it's the number 21, if I remember right. It's the size for an 832 uh, thread. All right, there we go. We'll come in here and drill the hole to tap an 832. I'm not going to go all the way through. Now I'm going to uh, put my larger drill bit back in here and we'll go to the other side and line that one up. I did not, I mean this thing may not be lined up perfectly square, I just eyeballed it in there, but uh, that actually feels pretty good. I think that's going to be fine. And I'm just going to hand tap these over uh, on in my vise. So there we go. I've got my little keys drilled and tapped and put in place. And uh, this is going to index very nicely with the uh, cutter head. That's what will drive it once we get it on there. And uh, these, don't worry about the links being a little bit different because as you can see, whenever we turn this uh, piece here down to the diameter to match this, it's gonna clean those up on the outside. I knew that when I did it, so I wasn't too worried about it, um, but that's coming along. So next, we need to start working on our shaft here, and I get that where we can press that up on there, pin it in place, we'll take these uh, out, we'll turn this end down to the right size, we'll face this off square, and uh, pin that in place and then we can put our dogs back in and uh, we should be should be in good shape. Well guys I got this pressed on here and forgot to turn the camera on so I'm, let me catch up to where we're at. I took this when I when I bored this out we basically it was just a, a little bit it was like a thou or two smaller diameter than the uh, the shaft 
and uh, I just went over to my Arbor Press, and I just it pressed right up on there. I didn't even have to heat it up, but it was a good tight fit in there, so I, I, I'm good there. Um, but I do want to make sure that it is pinned in place, that we're not just have a friction drive on there, or basically it'll be driving by these these uh, dogs out here on the end, so we don't want this disc spinning. So what we'll do is we're just going to use a tapered pin uh, to pin this in place. We'll drill a hole down through it, and then using a tapered reamer, we'll ream it out. We'll drive this pin in. This being a tapered pin, it will lock in place, and uh, it'll pretty much be mounted. And this collar will be driven by this pin, and of course the dogs will drive the, uh, the cutter itself. I've got my shaft in here. Well, it's sticking out three quarters of an inch on the bottom, which will be plenty uh, to go down into that cutter. Um, and I've got it mounted in my vise. I just took a couple of V-blocks here and I'm just pressing up against the back jaw. The V-blocks will, will hold that shaft in place and get it aligned where it's, it's straight across. So I think we're ready to go ahead and drill this on out. Uh, I measured the bottom of my pin and was it 210 thousandths roughly? Uh, this is a number three drill bit, which is like 213 thousand, so just a little bit larger, and that should give me room for this reamer uh, to go down in there to ream it out to the proper size. So let's, uh, let's drill it on out. There we go, we are through. should follow that hole down through there and it should ream it out to the proper taper for that tapered pin to drop down in there. Just like before, I'll kind of clear that out a little bit. Should go down about all the way down in there. I think we're all the way through. What I'm gonna do now is just uh, kind of drop this pin down in there. And yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. I'll take a pin and kind of uh, punch and just kind of drive that home and that pin will be locked in place. Take a punch here. Just hammer that into place. And the pin's gonna stick out a little bit there, but we're gonna turn this uh, outside and no big deal. That is locked in place. That will not turn now unless we shear that pin. And if we shear that pin, we got an awful lot of force on it. Let's take it to the lathe now and we're gonna go ahead and start working on turning that. Got it over in the lathe and we are gonna, I'm gonna start by just barely trimming this down. I just wanna get that, anything rough out of there. We're gonna put a center in the end and I want to actually finish turning this, everything in, turning it between centers. That way everything will be running, should be running nice and concentric on both sides, which will be very important. We want it to be running perfectly true in the spindle. Uh, so anyway, we're going to start by just uh, turning that outside diameter. Start by kind of cutting that pin out a little bit flush there. Got an interrupted cut going here right now. All right. That's at least just cleaned up and uh, we'll be turning it down to the right size here in just a bit. That's gonna be fine for right now. Let me get a center drill in there and we'll go ahead and get that center drilled. Tell you what, before I do that, I do want to face the end of the shaft. And we'll come in here with a center drill. 
to the center in the end. That should do it. I want to go ahead and get a center drill in the back end of this shaft and I realized kind of after I got into this, I really should have done this before I pressed that piece on the end because right, it would have been a lot easier if I could have just put it right up flush to the chuck and done it, but because of the way that that uh, flange is on the bottom now, it won't go up into the, the, the through hole in the he headstock, so I was able to get it behind the chuck, but it's sticking out. I put my um, my center steady rest on here to just kind of support it. We're going to face this one off and put a center drill in this side as well. And then we're going to do all our turning between centers so that both sides are concentric to one another and we don't have to worry about run out in our chucks and things like that, causing uh, this tool to not turn properly. And come in with a center drill here and do the same thing like we did on the other side. There we go. So to finish turning this, I've got a center up here in my chuck. I did true that up to make sure it's running perfectly true. I got a center on this end. Here is my shaft that we're making. I've got a drive dog on one end. Uh, we'll put that in there. We'll put it between centers here. And what's going to happen is, is when the chuck turns, it will engage right here. That will spin the part between centers. And the reason I'm doing this is I won't, I'm going to have to turn both sides of this piece. And I want the um, I want it to be concentric. I want it to be exactly uh, turning in the same uh, axis on both sides. So by turning it between centers, I can flip this part over, and when I do, everything's going to remain true in there. This is a much better way of doing it than trying to put it in a chuck or a collet, because in almost every case, a chuck or collet is going to have some run out in it. This uh, machine is set with my my tail stock is perfectly on center. Like I said, I trued this one up using where it was turned all in this chuck, so any run out in it was taken out. As long as I don't take that piece out of the chuck, it's gonna be running true. So uh, that's the game plan. Um, and you know, actually, as I'm sitting here looking at this, I think I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna put this in in first. I wanna turn this in down to one inch so it'll fit up into a tool holder, and I will go and machine some flats on there for a set screw to go in to and then I'm going to put the dog back on here and that way I'm not damaging the surface if I do it the other way around I turn this in first when I put this drive dog on here that that uh, nut that tightens up on there could deform this a little bit I want it to be running perfect so I'm going to flip it around we're going to turn this in first and then we'll flip it around and do this side all right, I have my part turned around. I got a drive dog on this side now. I'm gonna turn this down to one inch. It's inch and an eighth right now. That way it'll fit up into a one inch um, uh, collet or whatever on the middle machine we're gonna use to, to turn this with. And that's running pretty true, but uh, we're gonna make it where it runs true, concentric on both sides. So uh, we'll just go ahead and Start out. I'm just going to turn down uh, somewhere about that back in there. Sounds like I'm getting some chatter in this part. I think what I'm going to do is uh, put my steady rest back in here. Sometimes on a long shaft, you get a little vibration in it. If I put my steady rest in here, that should dampen it out. So uh, let me get that set back up. All right, so I got my steady rest mounted back in here. Again, that should give me a little bit more support. And hopefully we'll take dampen that vibration that we had. And I've got about 100 thou still to come out for this. All right, this should be our last pass here, taking it down to one inch diameter. Once we get through this one, I'll check it out with the micrometer. This should be it. All right. Let's see where we're at. 
There we go. Looks good. Go ahead and uh, break that corner there. There we go. I'm just going to lightly hit this with some emery cloth. Smooth that out a little bit. Don't want to do too much. We're on size. It could use to be just a tad undersized, but that looks a lot better. All right, I'm happy with that. We'll take this out. And what I'm going to do is go over to the middle machine and just mill a flat on this side, and that way I'll have a place for a set screw to go up against where it won't spin in that shaft. I've got my part flipped around now, and we're ready to go ahead and turn this side. I'm going to start with this outside diameter and get that finished up. I measured the, uh, the diameter of the part here, and it is 1 inch, 885 thousandths roughly. And we're just going to match that. So right now we're starting this about two and a quarter roughly and or two and an eighth rather. So we're going to start by getting that turned down. I want you to notice how we got a little bit of run out down here, but it's fine because we're going to turn it all out. And when we turn it out, it's going to be running concentric with the other side running right along the center of that part between the two centers that we put in there, which is the reason that we're going the way we are. Uh, when I turned this originally, a while ago, I just had it in three-jaw chuck. Three-jaw chucks rarely run perfectly true. Turning between centers, we should be perfectly true. All right, I've put a new insert in here. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. And also while I was thinking about it, I think I'm gonna turn this uh, shoulder and this diameter first. That way I can put those keys in here and go ahead and turn those so that they'll match this outside diameter as we, uh, as we do that. So this needs to be one inch in diameter and basically we just need to just skim this face to make sure it's running true with the shaft uh, like it's in there right now. Should be a final pass right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in and I'm just gonna face out while I'm in here. So now I think we're finally ready to turn this outside diameter. Notice I got the keys in there and uh, that one's sticking up a little bit proud. The other side's got a little bit of take off of it, but uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can finish this up. Yeah, that's an interrupted cut there. We'll uh, kind of ease into it a little bit. I'm just gonna do about 20 thousandths at a time. Just, uh, Mainly because of that interrupted cut that we're starting out with. But that is cutting a lot better. This should be the last pass right here. We're just fuzzing some off. All 
and we should be right on the money. I think we are done. Well, I said I was done, but I got one more step. I need to drill and tap a half inch 13 hole in the bottom of this shaft. And that will be for a set screw to go up or a socket cap screw to go up into that will hold the cutter on. So uh, got a 2764th drill bit. Yeah, it's running out a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. I got some plenty of uh, wiggle room for this shaft. If it's not perfectly in the center, it's not gonna be a big deal. If this was a through hole, I'd probably power tap it, but since it's going into a blind hole, I don't wanna risk uh, breaking the tap after doing all this work, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. I've just got a tap follower in here to help keep me straight. Half inch 13 tap on here, and we'll just run that down in there. Yeah, we bottomed out. All right, we will pull that out of the way. Reverse this tap out. And now I think we're through with the uh, machining. All right, let's uh, see how she fits. So here's our shell mill. Fits right up on there. Fits right up on there, great. And we'll take our Screw, put in the bottom, tighten that up, and voila, one extended reach shell mill holder that will hopefully allow me to get down in there and do that milling. You know, guys, I am a little bit concerned. I'll just be honest. Uh, you know, this is a fairly long, uh, this is inch and eighth diameter inch up here long reach to get down in the bottom of that um, that stoker body but um, when i look at the machine marks that were in there it was done with a cutter something like this i'm sure it wasn't an inserted cutter like this but it's same type deal where there was a, a round circular cutting cutter in there. You can tell by the machine marks. It was about this diameter. So I'm basically doing it the same way they did at the factory. And there's only one way to get down in there and that's with a shank on there, a long shank, just like we got right here. There's no other way they could possibly do it. So that was the way it was originally done. I'm hoping I don't run into any problems uh, with this setup. Uh, I think I'll be fine. We'll take our time, make light cuts down there, try not to hog too much out, and uh, I think we'll get by with the job. So anyway, one extended reach shell mill holder. We are ready to uh, go get that machine set up uh, for the Stoker engine and do some machining on it. It'll probably be a few weeks before I can get down and do it, but uh, we got the tool now that we need. Hope you enjoyed that. Well, there you go, guys. If uh, you can't buy what you need, you make what you need. And that's exactly what we did here. And uh, hopefully this tool will get the job done and do it well. I, I feel pretty confident we'll get it done with this. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that build. Uh, fun little project, something a little bit different. And uh, ah, always something enjoyable. So with that, guys, that will be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up or appreciate it, as are those comments. And please hit that bell icon so you get notifications when new videos are posted. And with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video. And again, thanks for watching.